start um, our second part of the Transport Committee this morning, where we're going to be looking again at the issue of cycling, and this is to follow up some of our previous work, and um, we're very fortunate that Andrew Gilligan, the Mayor's Cycling Commissioner, has agreed to come and talk to us again. He last came in December, just to really update us um, on progress, really. Um, so I'll just let Andrew settle in um, before we move into questions. Yeah. Um, you're very welcome for us again. I want to kick off with the issue of borough funding because this is something we have been very concerned about and um, it's taken us about three months to get the information from Transport for London which I know you promised us in December. Um, but what we're particularly concerned about is why, why the funding doesn't seem to really be going out the door as quickly as we would like to see to boroughs. So perhaps you could start off and clarify why only 1.8 million from the 100 million Mini Holland budget has actually been allocated to boroughs so far. Well, the cycling programme is divided into seven strands, and I would say that five of those strands are going well, and two of them aren't going well enough. Mm -hmm. And the two that aren't going well enough are the two borough strands. The uh, Central London Grid and the Quiet Ways. Central London Grid is essentially Quiet Ways Backstreet Cycle Routes yes. in Zone 1. And um, the, uh, the problem is that, um, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be honest, and I said to you before, last time I came, I'm pretty worried about the Central London Grid, particularly about progress on that. In fact, I'm, I'm deeply worried. Um, they're on the whole less complicated routes than the superhighways of progress has been quite slow, um, and that's why we have the underspin that we do. And, um, and I don't think it's the fault of anybody at TfL. I think the borough programmes people are very good and they're, really, and they're really keen on it, but it's not actually their job to deliver the schemes. It's the borough schemes. I don't even think it's mainly the fault of the boroughs. Um, the, again, a lot of the boroughs are, are very keen. It's just the fact that there seem to be a lot of moving parts, a, a lot of complicated um, interactions. A typical quiet way route, for instance, will involve TfL and possibly up to four or five boroughs. Um, and um, some of them have been um, slow to agree routings. We still haven't agreed a route alignment in Tower Hamlets for, uh, for one of the first seven quiet way routes. Um, and uh, others have been, um, as I say, quite a lot of the boroughs are very keen, um, but it's just, it's just the fact that there's moving parts. So basically, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely worried about the central London grid. Um, by now we're supposed to deliver 17 schemes and by my count only two, possibly three of the 17 have been completed and all those are basically there already. Only one of the others has even started building. Um, of the nine central London boroughs, uh, only one, which is Westminster, has shown us all its proposed pre-2016 designs. Um, all the others have now shown us some, um, actually I think, no, to be fair, the city has shown us its pre-2016 designs as mm -hmm. well. The city just came in last, last week or about 10 days ago with those. Um, the uh, the boroughs haven't even started consulting on more than a handful of schemes yet, um, mostly in Camden. I think Islington's just gone out to consultation on one, Kensington Chelsea's just gone out to consultation on one. Um, so. Uh, uh, and the other problem is that not all the schemes are good enough really to justify the um, public money being spent on them at the moment um, and that and we've had to come back o on a few um, some of them amount to rebadging of existing routes at um, some public expense I I don't want that I have no objection to rebadging per se where the routes good enough and quite a lot of them are um, what I don't want is to spend a fortune on it so either we do something serious and spend serious money or we do a rebadging and don't spend serious money. Um, where there are inevitable, you know, where there are more ambitious schemes, it will inevitably be, be pushed back at consultation. Um, so I think what that means is we're running out of time to uh, to meet our December 2016 deadline. Now, um, I think uh, uh, broadly we, we have a um, we have a plan in place to fix it. That, that's part of the explanation for the underspend. It's not actually the major explanation. The major explanation is that we went out to consultation on the superhighways slightly later and took um, slightly longer doing the consultation than we'd planned um, uh, for completely um, correct reasons, which I'll go into when we talk about the superhighways. Um, 
But, but you know, the borough, the borough end of the programme is the bit of the explanation that troubles me, it troubles Isabel Dedring, it troubles Peter Hendy, and it troubles the Mayor. So, I mean, I, I defended the underspend on the borough programmes a year ago um, because we were still drawing up the programme. I, I absolutely refuse to defend it now. Um, uh, as Peter has said, it is embarrassing. Um, so anyway, I can announce today that we are recasting the borough programmes, um, the quiet ways in the grid, and TfL is going to make uh, is going to take more direct involvement in delivering them. Um, so we are placing them under the aegis of the team, delivering the superhighways and the junctions, and we are appointing the head of projects and programmes at TfL, Sean Pidcock, to oversee them and get them moving. Um, he has he has 30 years' experience in the industry, nine years' experience at TfL. Um, and he's been responsible for delivering, among other things, the Olympic route network. So I hope that is an indication of how seriously we're taking this and the seriousness of our commitment to tackle the underspend. Mm. That's so helpful. Let me, I'm going to have to sort of unpick that a bit because your answer wasn't actually to the question I'd asked, which was specifically on Mini Holland. So let me just take a step back then. Is one of the issues that the boroughs whilst politically they may be committed, maybe at officer level they may be committed, they just don't have the capacity to be able to deliver these schemes in a, in a, in a fast time, particularly there has been some reduction, I think, in transport officers. We, we had that evidence before us from London councils. And is this, therefore, your announcement today making sort of direct control of these projects? It's, it's taking more control. Essentially, they will still be borough-delivered, um, these mm. projects, um, because they're on borough roads. But they'll have to be... Um, there have to be more TfL oversight, I think. This is basically TfL basically giving a bit of extra officer support yeah. in order to deliver these because the boroughs just yeah. haven't got and, the and capacity. And a bit more, that's right, and a bit more kind of general um, oomph in the programme. I mean, I, I say, like I say, we've, we've got seven strands in the, in the, in the cycling programme, and of those I would say that four are going very well. The super highways are going very well, the better junctions are going very well, the cycle high is going very well, and the kind of miscellaneous other strands are going well, uh, and I'd like to go into them at some point if I can. Um, the Mini Hollands are uh, can, can we going just... partly well. Um, you asked about the Mini Hollands. I did. I did. I just because you've talked about other stuff, let yeah. me just try and unpick that. I know it's all in your hmm. you hold it all in your mind, Andrew. Let's just be, try and be very logical on this. Um, you mentioned quiet ways as an area you were concerned about, and you've said what you're going to do to try and resolve that. So only eight boroughs have so far received Quiet Ways funding. 25 have received nothing. Is that because they haven't produced the designs, because they haven't been able to agree anything? The, um, the, the Quiet Ways programme is in two phases. Phase, phase one comprises seven routes, uh, which will enter a total of 15 boroughs. Um, and uh, most of the eight boroughs which have received funding are those in the first phase. Right. The, um, the, the figures you've got are slightly out of it, only relate to January. Um, mm -hmm. There should be more funding. More funding should have gone to some of the other 15, some of the other seven boroughs um, that, that are zero on your list by now. Um, the Quiet Waste Programme, as I say, I, I'm less concerned about the Quiet Waste Programme than I am about the grid. Um, the Quiet Waste Programme is being built. It is in delivery. Um, the first route is building at the moment between Walkley and Greenwich. Um, the builders are in. Uh, the planning application for the most important intervention on the, on the route, um, which is a new section, quite long section of cycle track behind Millwall football ground. That's, uh, that's in process at the moment. We expect a decision by the end of the month um, and hopefully if it's an affirmative decision we can get on and start building it. Um, there are route delivery plans in place for all seven of the routes with the exception of the Tower Hamlet section of one which I mentioned where they haven't agreed the route yet. Um, the, uh, there's, there's discussions ongoing, there's a meeting today about some of the other interventions which need to take place on some of the routes. For instance, there's a bridge on one of the routes uh, over into the Olympic Park which has steps on it um, which we need to, and the Mayor has promised to install a slope on. Um, mm. That's taking a while. Um, that's an example of the kind of interaction, third party interaction we've had to have. Now mm. I've been discussing putting a slope on that bridge with the LLDC, um, whose bridge it is, for about... 18 months, possibly longer. Um, they gave the first commitment in principle to, uh, to ramp it about 18 months ago, and it still hasn't happened. And we need to... That, that's, the kind of, that's, that's the kind of thing I mean. Mm. Small interventions without which... Well, relatively small interventions without which routes can't work, but need an awful lot of pushing at an individual level. 
Obviously, um, the LLDC is chaired by the Mayor of London, right. who so also you work for every, with this I vision. Have, I have every hope of getting a positive outcome at some point, because the Mayor has specifically promised that there will be a ramp on that bridge, which is supposed to be, quote, the main cycle route into the <coughs> park. I do not know why it was built with steps in the first place, if that was the case, and that was before my time. Um, the, the issue there at the moment is we have a kind of... We have, we have one of the sorts of problems that sometimes seems to come up in these sort of things as a kind of perfect the enemy of the good. Um, uh, at the moment, the space available um, for a ramp in that location is only enough for a 1 in 7.5 metre gradient ramp, uh, and that is deemed non-compliant with health and safety. There's some, there's some kind of safety audit been done that says that, um, that there's a chance that a cyclist might go out of control and you know, lose control on the ramp or something like that because it's, it's actually not that steep, it's about that steep it's, very, it's, it's a very shallow ramp there's loads and loads of ramps in London of that depth and of course there are a number of hills um, uh, on which cyclists much steeper than, one is, uh, than that, that gradient on which cyclists share um, steep slopes with um, nasty big vehicles like lorries um, so I'm slightly impatient with all that kind of thing. We've, des we've designed a new design to get round that, which has a ramp that doubles back on itself now and gets a, gets a gradient of a, a much lower gradient. Um, it's, uh, um, so that, that's where we're at. That's, that's, that's the kind of thing I mean. There's all these kind of slightly small but, not, but still very important issues that, um, that, that, are, um, that, that have to be resolved before we can deliver the routes, and they all seem to require political intervention and um, intervention by me to get them unblocked. And, um, and that's one of the reasons why we're trying to get more um, uh, kind of intervention capacity at an earlier stage in the TfL delivery mechanisms. There's no criticism of anybody involved at TfL. Mm -hmm. They're very good. But as I say, it's not their job to deliver this. It's the job of third parties. Uh, and as I say, the boroughs too, I think, are genuinely very committed, a lot of them, very committed. And, uh, and, uh, and as you say, I think a lot of it may be due to the quite severe reductions in capacity that have taken place at, um, at, at borough level in the last three or four years. You've got enough capacity at TfL to help with this new I think we have. We, we've engaged a delivery agent, Sustrans, um, yes. who uh, they, they, they're working with the boroughs. In some cases, they're going to do quite a lot of the work. In other mm. cases, the borough itself wants to do the work. Um, uh, it just depends on the individual council. Um, so uh, they, uh, in roughly half the initial 15 boroughs, I think, they're going to do the work, largely Sustrans. And, uh, and then the, uh, I mean, that is the, the designing of the routes and um, then in, uh, in the other cases the boroughs are going to do it. So, uh, so it really does depend on the individual borough. Okay and then let's just pick up the central London grid that you mentioned was the other area you were particularly worried about. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, as I say, my, well, I, I, I classify six out of the seven as good or partially good progress, mm -hmm. including the quiet ways. Central London grid is the only one I'd say I'd really seriously worry And that's essential if we're going to have all these superhighways working properly yeah. and having that network. You're going to have links to them from the super Is it just the boroughs aren't working at a pace, or are they not happy with some of it? I, I think, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to cast blame on anybody, um, and I think, uh, but the fact is that uh, in just over two years, we have produced enormously complicated and politically contentious designs for superhighways, better junctions, um, on busy traffic roads involving major interventions, massive and continuous interventions on those roads. We have gone through consultation. Uh, we, we've designed them, we've gone through consultation, and we're now actually starting to build them. Um, they're all in build, apart from one which is about to start building in three weeks. Um, in the same amount of time, uh, we have, a, um, we have a, achieved almost no building um, on what are much simpler routes. And, um, and I think we need to, I think that, that's why we're appointing um, Sean, and that's why, we're, that's why we're determined to get a grip on the borough programme. So you're appointing? Sean, the, the programme manager I mentioned The programme manager, sorry, yeah. I don't know how to call his name. Okay. That's helpful, thank you. Now let's get on to the Mini Holland budget. Only 1.8 million from the 100 million has been allocated to boroughs so far. You're not concerned about that? The mini hot well, I, I absolutely do not, um, would not support writing a 30 million pound check the day we award the funding. Mm. Um, the funding has to depend on acceptance of good quality schemes. Um, and uh, we've seen, again, 
partly for understandable reasons. Um, we've seen uh, mixed rates of progress in the Mini Hollands. I think Waltham Forest, one of the three, is going great guns, um, and they're about to get substantial amounts of funding for the things they've, they've done and tested. Um, I think uh, Kingston is picking up steam. Uh, they, their, first, um, their first scheme, the initial plans for the first scheme, um, didn't really meet with most cyclists' approval, uh, and uh, we, we met with them, and uh, they've now, just yesterday, in fact, issued a vastly improved um, designs for that scheme on Portsmouth Road, and so there'll be funding coming out for that scheme any time now. Um, that's just received sponsor approval at TfL. But, of course, in, any scheme has to, be, has to go through the TfL process, has to be, has to be considered good enough by us and, uh, before we can release the funding. So that's why, that's why not much funding has, has been released yet, because <coughs> most of the proposals are still going through that process. But you will see funding starting to be released now. As I say, Portsmouth Road has been through the process and been approved. There are some other Kingston schemes in the pipeline. There are several Waltham Forest schemes in the pipeline. Enfield is the one I'm most concerned about. Of the three, um, there's uh, a fair amount of political resistance building up to some of the things they want to do, um, and I've had uh, I've had more meetings um, with you know stakeholders in Enfield than elsewhere. Um, in fact, I've had more meetings with stakeholders in elsewhere uh, than, than either of the other two put together. I have none at all in the, in in Waltham Forest, and I think only one in Kingston. Um, I've probably had about okay. four in Enfield. So that that's 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 one of the reasons why um, spending hasn't flown straight out of the door because obviously we have to have schemes we can approve and we're getting those now. We're getting that. And, but there were, I think you said previously there were £10 million out of this for some schemes in Barrows that were unsuccessful in part of That's the right. overall mini Holland. How, how are we progressing on that? I'm not sure we have any detail of... Each of the Barrows was written to in April um, outlining um, that they had uh, been provisionally... Am I right about that? It, it, was, it was... I think it was perhaps a couple of months later than that. But last year, um, uh, outlining that they had received um, uh, money for some of the elements of their mini Holland schemes. In Ealing, for instance, they're getting about six million for the uh, uh, uplift of the town centre they want to do, the, the, making the town centre cycle friendly. In Twickenham, they're getting 2.9 million for Twickenham town centre, London Borough of Richmond, of course, um, and they're getting. Uh, substantial amount of money to upgrade the A316 cycle track along the A316, which was also part of their mini hall and bid. Um, Hounslow and Hammersmith and Fulham are getting money to upgrade the A315, um, which is the old cycle superhighway 9. Um, there's money for bridges or crossings of the A406 in both Redbridge and Brent. Um, and all that money is committed and accounted for in the program, and all the boroughs know they're getting it. And um, I know the last time you appeared, uh, the last time we appeared um, here at the committee, Julian Bell was with me, and the leader of Ealing Council, and he was saying um, he was happy with the amount of money he had under, the, uh, under that so far. I think he's got, broadly, we, we, as I say, again, we don't, we don't write the cheque straight away. No. We have to see an acceptable scheme. So they, they, get, they get about a tenth of it to work up plans and designs, and then if we're happy with the plans and designs, they get the rest. And that's, that's the stage they're working through at the moment, most of them, the plans and design stage. So all those you've listed add up to the 10 million? They add up to more than 10 million, actually. Some of thinking. it's coming out of the, yeah, they add up to fairly substantial. They add up to about 40 million in total, um, and that's 10 million of that's coming out of the Mini Holland's budget. As you know, we only allocated 90 million to the three boroughs, um, and the other 30 million is coming out of the Quiet Waste budget. I think, <clears throat> though we've got this chart, I think I still don't find it very straightforward to, um, to be clear exactly what money is being spent on what sort of schemes per borough. I don't know. I know we've got this grid here, but there's mm. extra money this from Mini Hollands, which don't yeah. only features in the three boroughs, except we know 10 million of that is for various other boroughs. And I'm just wondering that stuff might be being lost here. Um, so maybe we can just get Thank some clarity on that. Um, yeah. Now, my, my final question, which again we may need to have in writing, is how much you're planning to allocate to boroughs for all of these sorts of works in 2015-16? Because if the designs are being done this year and it's being painful and it's slow, suddenly we've got designs, you give the OK, we should see a massive spend next year. What sort of figure are we looking at seeing spent in the boroughs in the next year? In terms of um, non-TLRN infrastructure, well, total infrastructure next year is going to be 200 and four million pounds. Um, next year is going to be the big spending year because mm. that's where most of the construction on the <coughs> super highways will be 
and, um, and most of the construction on the pre-2016 grid and quiet ways will be. Um, and of that, the non-TLRN element is £91 million, pounds, uh, which is uh, an overspend of what we were planning to do in that year of £24 million, um, and that reflects the underspend of this year. Uh, overspends don't get lost to the programme, they get carried forward, but I mean, I've said that in the past, and I've defended underspends in the past, as you know, because I think we did need time to work up adequate designs, but, um, but um, clearly if we, if we keep on underspending much longer, then we're going to run out of time yeah. to spend the money in the programme. So there's going to be a significant overspend, there's programme to be a significant overspend in 2015-16, which will make up for most of the underspend this year. But 91 million is what's going to go to the boroughs. 91 million is non-TLRN infrastructure, yeah. so yes. And so yeah, Mini Holland's is 23 million, Central London Grid is 26 million, Quiroz is 33 million. A few small items like um, rail, super hubs, and uh, cycle parking make up the rest. Okay, that's helpful. Richard wanted to come in next. Well, yes. Um, I, I mean, like Caroline, I'm, I'm somewhat confused by the, the chart which we were sent by, by TFL. Uh, and, I mean, you, you say... It's it, this, it actually, this, this letter they sent you in... Yeah, that's the one. Right, yeah. so uh, you'll be talk, it, it is indeed January 2015, but um, I, I keep hearing from, from colleagues that, that they don't seem to be seeing much evidence of of this money, um, <clears throat> you know, various boroughs particularly who, who went into the competition mm. for Mini Hollands and were runners-up. I mean, as you know, Merton was one. Well, mm. now, um, I, I keep hearing from Merton that, from Merton councillors, some of them, that, that they, don't, they don't see a lot of evidence of, of anything really going forward in, in the peripheral Mini Holland scheme. I mean, there is some money, of course, being devoted to the town centre, which is, I gather, lip funding, major lip funding for uh, Wimbledon town centre. So it isn't Mini Holland money as such, mm -hmm. is it? And, and, and then there are, there, I mean, Kingston say that uh, they, as you know, there was some controversy about the, uh, the, the ramp on the river. Uh, is that going to go ahead or not? Because uh, the, the last I heard from them was that they... They seem to be redesigning a lot of the plan. There was a change of council control, of course, in May, and that may have affected that. So what, 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 what actually is happening? The, um, the Peter Hendy was in Merton last week. And yes, he, uh, he, he came away telling me that they were all frightfully satisfied. Yeah, with that's, that's certainly the message I got from him. Um, are you getting the message from the, from the actual council or from the opposition councillors? Ca ca from, well, certainly from op opposition councillors who represent the centre of Wimbledon, you know, and they are therefore, they, they may not be the majority party, but they are the councillors representing those wards. I, I've written uh, to Andrew Judge, the cabinet member there. Um, yeah, well, he's not, he's not, he, he doesn't represent central Wimbledon, well, he represents he's south Wimbledon. He's responsible for delivering this scheme. Yeah, and, well, uh, and I, I can assure you we have firmly committed a large amount of money. It is, it is from the LIP major scheme budgets rather than the cycling budget, and that's good because it leaves more yeah. money for cycling in the rest of the budget to deliver the mini Holland element of Wimbledon Town Centre. And there's also going to, we've also written to them um, about 10 days ago um, uh, saying what we're going to do uh, for the quietly programme. So they are going to get substantial amounts of money. And, and some of that has come forward already. Yes, but not, not a great deal according to this chart. I mean, I think it says 32,000, which is uh, yeah, considerably less than I think they were expecting. So, Richard, the, uh, this, this chart, as I mentioned at the beginning, is two months out of date. In the two months since yeah. this was, these figures were produced, they've had more money. Um, and as I understand, I haven't spoken to them directly, I, I admit, since, uh, since these figures were produced, but... Um, Peter has, and he says they're absolutely, they're, they're delighted with the money they're getting. Right. Okay, well, that's his account of it. Uh, what about the, 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 King, the Kingston situation? Kingston's, uh, that, um, that does seem to be a bit confused. I mean, you know, obviously I, I know quite a lot of the people in Kingston, having yeah. once been Member of Parliament for part of it. You mentioned the Boardway. Um, that's, due to, that's due to start... Um, they're due, to, they're due to produce designs for us by August, um, and it's due to be finished. It was never due to be finished before January 2018. Um, 
mm. the not all the not all the mini hall elements are going to be delivered in the mayor's term. Um, as you know, it's one of the most controversial elements. Um, I'm quite keen to be assured that it is necessary. Um, yes. It is actually rather a useful link to and around the town centre. But I want to be sure that it is uh, that, that it is necessary before we sign the checks for it. Yes. But what we've seen in Kingston is the first um, full scheme coming out, Portsmouth mm. Road scheme. As I say, I. Uh, neither I nor the cycling community was very happy with the first plans for that. Mm -hmm. um, we asked Kingston to go back and have another look at it. They have done. They produced far better plans, which I think right. uh, the cycling community and certainly I support. Mm -hmm. And uh, those plans are going to be... They've been through the sponsor process. They've been approved. Uh, the money's about to be released. They're about to be built. Now, you, you just mentioned the, the, the fact that, of course, quite a bit of this isn't going to be delivered in this mayoral term by right. May 2016. And that was never the intention? Uh, no. No, I mean, well, what is the assurance? I mean, we'll have a different mayor. Um, I mean, it's quite likely that you won't be the, the cycling commissioner. So, I mean, are you, are you particularly happy with the situation? And whether uh, well, all, all, all of these great schemes, I mean, particularly the Mini Hollands, which Outer London is very keen on, will, will they be delivered with a... My, my intention is to assure that the, the schemes are in place, that, if you like, the contracts have been signed before this mayor leaves office. I see. But there was never any intention, uh, and it's physically impossible, to finish the mini-Holland schemes before May 2016. And, and because there are more moving parts, mm. and because, there are, it, because it's a borough rather than us that's delivering them, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, it's going to take longer. And these are... These are areas where the politics is more difficult in terms of cycling, mostly. The, um, there are outer London areas where there isn't a high tradition of cycling. That's the entire point. So we, we allowed for that in the yeah. timetable, and that's why we've always said, we've never said from, from day one, um, that they will all be delivered before 2016. But I'd like to get the contracts, as it, I'd, I'd like to get the designs approved, I'd like to get the funding out mm. of the door, I'd like to get the contracts on the building work signed and sealed before May 2016. Right. Okay, thank you. Mira, I'd want to come in. Thank you. Can, can I just go back to the central London grid? I, I notice it's not just local authorities you're, you're funding um, to, to do things. It's also the Canal Rivers Trust. Um, can, can you just explain that, that? Although the amount isn't huge, um, I just asked that because I'm, I'm wearing another hat to chair the London Waterways Commission. I, I know some of the tensions along the, the towpaths of, uh, of our canals between... But very little of and this. cyclists, and I think yeah. that needs to be managed in a certain way. Very, very little of the central London grid is, is on um, Canal Tape Path, a very short section on the Regent's Canal. But as you know, most of the section of the Regent's Canal through central London, that central bit through Camden and so on, isn't suitable. Um, there are quite long sections of quiet ways on the Canal Tape Path, and they are included. Some of those sections are included in our Phase 2 um, quiet ways programme. So, for instance, there's a long section on the Grand Union Canal tape path from Little Venice out to Artsbridge. Um, that's, uh, that's an upgrading of the existing tape path. Some of it's already been upgraded under, under one of the pre-existing programmes, the Greenways programme, um, but some of it still needs to be upgraded and that will be done as phase two of the quietways. Um, the, uh, uh, we've always said that the, the, the main section of the Regent's Canal that there's, there's one section of the Regent's Canal in Central London that is suitable, um, and that's between uh, roughly um, uh, Lisson Grove and St Mark's Square, if you know where that is, that's near the zoo. Um, oh, yeah. It's quite a wide tape path. The rest of it we're not going to include on, the, on either the quiet or the Central London grid network in Central London. So that, that bit east of St Mark's Square, through Camden Town, Camden Lock, um, uh, along down to sort of King's Cross uh, and down to the tunnel mouth in Islington. None of that's going to be on the grid or the quietway network because it's, uh, it's you know, we're not going to stop people cycling on the, on the, on the towpath, but it's, it's quite busy enough already and we don't think it can take more cyclists. Yeah. So uh, at the section in East London in Tower Hamlets, again, also quite busy not planned to be included on the on the grid network or the central and or the uh, or the um, or the quietway network at the this moment. This is around the limehouse. That's right. I mean, going east from the mouth of the tunnel um, at Islington, uh, again, there's a, there's that there's that really crowded bit by the narrowboat mm. pub. 
none of that's going to be part of the, uh, of the network. But some of the outer, some of the, some of the, some of the western sections are the, the outer section of the Grand Union from Little Venice to Uxbridge. That's reasonably okay. Um, it's reasonably quiet. Um, so that's going to be, and also the Brentford arm of the Grand Union mm. from uh, from Brentford to Bullsbridge Junction. That's going to be on the. Okay. Well, I certainly think wherever it is going to be encouraged, it just needs to be clearly marked on the towpaths who's got right of way. So yeah. I think that's that's the issue. The same, the same, the same sort of code. Of, we've agreed with the CRT that the same code of conduct will apply. In other words, that uh, pedestrians do have priority. And just can, uh, still staying with Central London, I mean, you said the officers are on side, um, but it, it maybe the members uh, are not so much on side, the councillors in, in the local project in Central London, because they're, they're actually getting a lot of pressure from residence groups. Is that Well, they're not, they're not at the moment, but my worry is that when we actually start going out to consultation on contentious schemes, they will. Um, mm. And that's why I'm so concerned to get these schemes out to consultation quickly. Um, ideally, I think, obviously, we've We've, 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 we've consulted, Camden's consulted on, on several schemes and they're actually building, well the only central London grid borough is actually building anything at the moment um, in Pancras Road and it's quite good. Um, and uh, they've consulted on several more schemes. Um, Kensington Chelsea I think has consulted on one scheme uh, last week and I think Islington have cons just consulted in the last week on, on some schemes. Um, but I want the majority of schemes to go out for consultation fairly soon after the election, um, after PERDA, um, because I think uh, we will, um, we will uh, otherwise run out of time to deliver them. Okay, I'll ju just say that because I've, I've seen two pages from uh, a Bayswater residence group in the latest newsletter. That's about the super highway, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, if, if that's anything to go by, I think that the, the, yeah, the, we've, we've they're, they're waiting with... for the consultations. Yeah. Well, and the I think there is a difference, dare I say, between councillors representing their residents yeah. and us thinking strategic, strategically across the whole of London and I think they can, they, there can be a difference between those two. So, so that, that refers largely to the super highways which are a much higher intervention scheme obviously and on much busier roads. Um, most of the quiet ways and most of the central London grid should I hope be fairly uncontentious. There will always be objections to people who don't want cyclists just going past their houses. Um, most of the, but there won't be as many um, major interventions as there are on the superhighways, and there won't be anything like as much effect on traffic. There'll be some effect sometimes where it has to cross a, a major road, but not much. Um, having said that, there will always be pe people, you know, our experience is people nearly always object to anything, um, and we just have to be, we just have to take the time to to meet those objections. Okay. I just think one of the issues that will need to be dealt with, and it seems to be the big bugbear in Bayswater, is the loss of residential parking. There's, not, there's, be, yeah. there's no real loss it of residential parking. It comes down yeah, to things like that. Th there's no real loss of residential parking on that scheme in Bayswater because it's going along Westbourne Terrace, which, as you know, hasn't got residential mm -hmm. parking. The parking in Westbourne Terrace is on service roads. Um, but, uh, but, of course, there will be loss of residential parking in, in, in some of these schemes, and that's exactly why I'm so keen to get out and consult on them. Okay. Um, everything is always local. I think what I would find useful, and we'll write afterwards to try and get this from yourself and TfL, is yeah. for each borough, very clear, listing the schemes, which pot of money it's coming from and how much, because some of these, like Mini Holland things you mentioned, aren't yeah. from the Mini Holland budget. I think that's an excellent lit. idea, yeah. And I think if we could just be very clear, then we, that I think that will help all of us, because yes. we, we're all having... Um, questions raised with us from different boroughs, so I think that would be helpful. Let's move on to cycle superhighways. Tom, you're going to pick that up. Thanks very much, Chair. Yes, um, uh, could you uh, tell us about the progress you've had, oh, excuse me, <coughs> with the uh, re trying to reach agreement with the Royal Parks over, uh, I think it's, isn't it, over the, the nighttime uh, use and the route past Buckingham Palace? It's the um, route past Buckingham Palace is the area where we, uh, we are still uh, await agreement with the Royal Parks on a route. Um, as you know, we're out to consultation on it at the moment. Um, the Royal Parks favour, the Royal, the Royal Parks um, position in High Park, um, which we've reflected in our route, um, and as you will see in the consultation, is that the route must run on the roads. In other words, it must run on South Carriage Drive and West Carriage Drive um, in segregated tracks on the roads, um, rather than on on the paths like Serpentine Road and Broadwalk, which are you know the existing cycle routes, they'll remain for cycles, but they won't be part, formally part of the superhighway. And we've accepted that. The Royal Park's position on 
St. James's Park in Buckingham Palace is the exact opposite, that it must not run on the roads um, and uh, that it must run on the paths. Um, and what they want is for it to go up Horse Guards Road, um, which is that road that runs past the Cabinet War Rooms, if you know where that is, and then turn into the Mall and then go along that path that runs on the north side of the Mall, then behind that screen, just by Buckingham Palace, that stone screen where the TV reporters do their stand-ups, and, um, and then emerge onto a track in, on Constitution Hill. And um, I've got concerns about that route, first because it's less direct than the one we want, and secondly because it does create major pedestrian cyclist conflict at the, mm -hmm. at the bottom of Constitution Hill, at the, at the eastern end of Constitution Hill, just by the palace, is a crossing, pedestrian crossing. Uh, at, at which on a sunny summer's day there are regularly perhaps 150, 200 pedestrians waiting to cross because that's yeah. where they come. If you're going to Buckingham Palace, that's where you come to get to the palace from, Buck, from Green Park Tube Station. And at the moment, the, the, the Royal Park's proposal is going to um, mean that, they, uh, that cyclists you know, more or less cannoning into those people. Um, and in the eastbound direction particularly, that'll be concerning because they'll be coming downhill, Constitution Hill is, what, is indeed a hill. What's the so, issue with, the, with Royal Parks? I mean, they seem to be quite an untransparent body. Um, Who are they accountable we've to? Had, um, we've had uh, quite long discussions. We've got, had quite long discussions with the, with the Royal Parks about this. And, um, and what they said is that they will respond um, to our position after the consultation is finished, which is in, what, two weeks' time, I think, mm. something like that. Um, and... Uh, we're going to be meeting the chair of the Royal Parks to discuss that um, in the fairly near future. I mean, I, I am hopeful. Doesn't, oh, I'm, doesn't, doesn't, forgive me, Tom. Let yeah. me finish. I'm, I'm hopeful that a, um, a a resolution can be reached to this issue, and I really hope it does because Spur Road is also that's the gyratory outside Buckingham Palace. It's also one of the most difficult gyratories in London for cyclists. It's mm. it's scary, even for me as an experienced cyclist, because traffic is coming at you from two directions. There aren't very many road markings. And it's one of our 33 better junctions. So I'm very, very keen um, that we come to an, uh, uh, you know, a conclusion with the Royal Parks, and I hope we can. Absolutely. I mean, doesn't, doesn't the mayor at least co-appoint some of the people onto the Royal Parks board? I mean, isn't, uh, can't he use his influence via them to, to achieve, you know, well, this is, uh, this, this is his policy, so yes. should, he should be putting influence yes. uh, on Yes, and, and that, that's the argument we're making to the Royal Parks. Okay. Good. Um, could you also uh, tell us about um, progress on reaching agreement with the city on the east-west uh, superhighway? I'm glad to say the city have agreed to it. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, they, were, they had um, serious concerns about it um, when you last spoke to them, um, and they were, um, they, were, you know, they were opposed to many elements of it. I'm glad to say that they have now voted, um, the members have now voted to support it, mm -hmm. and... Um, and we are uh, we have we have been able to resolve a number of the points that they are that they were concerned about as part of the consultation. As you know, we made some changes to the proposed route um, post the consultation to make it more acceptable to some of the opponents. And um, the city's uh, the city's now in favour of the route, so I'm very pleased about that. Okay, and, and I'm sorry if you've mentioned this previously, but when's that? What's the timetable now for that going forward? The uh, first works will start on the 11th of. April, mm -hmm. it's about three weeks at Hyde Park Corner. Works on the main route. Um, will start immediately after the London Marathon has finished using it, which is on the 27th. Okay, thank you. Uh, and um, have any changes been made to pedestrian crossing times uh, following the concerns expressed by Living Streets? Made a significant change to the. It's one of the main points the city was after. Um, significant change to the crossing of Ludgate Circus on the North South Super Highway. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be. Uh, straight across, so it's going to take less time for people to cross. Um, it's going to be much more pedestrian friendly than it was in the original plans. Um, on the east-west, um, the changes of pedestrian crossing times were not enormous anyway. The, the most that any pedestrian wait time would go up is nine seconds, and um, a lot would have gone down. A lot will, a lot will go down under the proposals. Um, so there haven't been any significant changes as far as I'm aware to pedestrian crossing times on the east-west. Um, and the um, Schemes overall are enormously beneficial for pedestrians. A lot more pedestrian space, more pedestrian crossings, and a lot more straight across crossings where you don't have to wait on an island in the middle of the road. Uh, and, and so crossing times will be quicker in most cases. Okay. Uh, and finally, um, how likely is it, do you think, you're going to face a judicial review from the taxi drivers? We have a, 
there's a three-month window for them to launch a judicial review. We're exactly halfway through it. Mm -hmm. It's six weeks since the formal decision was taken. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not relaxing yet. Okay. And if it did go ahead, how would that affect the timing? Um, it depends exactly on what the judge says, I think. I mean, if the judge says we've got to stop work, then clearly it will. Thank you. Murad wanted to come in on this. Yeah, thank you. Um, on, on the um, cycle of superhighways. The, the one bit which I haven't heard too much about, uh, although it was presented uh, very strongly when the proposals were put, is the, uh, the elevated highway on, on the west. On the west way, yeah. Um, I, I, it's, there are a number of concerns. Uh, and can I firstly take the kind of cyclist perspective? Uh, if you don't mind. I mean, it's, it's actually quite an effort to get up there. Uh, if, you go, if you try and get up on a scooter, up on a scooter, I've certainly done that. Okay. You, you, can, you have to put your Even foot down quite a bit. Even with an That's troubling. Uh, the, the, so that's one issue, how you, how you get up there. Um, two, it's pretty inflexible. Once you're up there, you know, it's not, you're not going to be able to get down to Portobello Road, are you, or North Ken. You've got to go all the way up to the bush and then come back round and things like this. So it's actually pretty inflexible. And also, I mean, it's actually... Um, you know, there's a, you're, you're vulnerable to the elements up there. So I'm, I'm not sure uh, what work has been done on that front to, to kind of at least deal with the cyclist concerns, let alone other concerns. Let, let, let's, let's deal with the concept first, and I'll talk you through the specifics of what yeah. we're up to on, on, that, on that flyover. Um, I, I know people say it sounds like a weird mm. idea, but actually if you think about it, it, it's, it's a brilliant place for superhighway because the, the, the key problems with, um, with bike lanes are... Um, curbside loading, bus stops, uh, turns, and general um, pedestrian activity. There's none of any of that on the <laughs> Westway. There's no buses, there's no curbside loading, there's no turnings, there's no pedestrian activity. Um, so it, it makes it brilliantly easy to deliver. Um, the, uh, I mean, on, on the East-West, we've had to go through agonies um, to get the scheme to work with all the existing users. Uh, on this, it's it's just much much simpler. Um, so uh, the um, and it will provide the most fantastic route direct into West London, a huge swathe of West London, all the way out to Shepherd's Bush, um, along the A40 to uh, to Ealing, Wembley, uh, vast areas of um, uh, of West London, and uh, it's um, it's going to be. Uh, a huge boon. There is a possibility, I might add as well, of doing a ramp down um, halfway in the North Kensington area that makes if we can sense. find some of it to land. And we've been talking to the council about that, we're talking to KNC about that. Um, uh, because again, that area of North Kensington is not particularly well served by public transport. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're in Ladbrook Grove and you want to go to Central London, you've got to go around the house and the Hammersmith and City line. So that could um, get a significant amount of, uh, of usage for it. Um, in terms of the actual delivery, the, um, as you know, it's, it's, it's not being delivered in the same phase as the, as the first section from Tower Hill to Westbourne Terrace, um, but it's been delivered fairly soon after. We uh, intend to consult on it later this year, probably in the summer. Um, the the uh, hurdles that have been crossed so far include things like a structural survey and checking whether the slope is indeed too, um, you know, <laughs> too steep yeah. to cycle up, and it really isn't. Um, and, uh, well, Okay, you know, I'm happy to go up there if you want to go up there. Yeah, cycle I, I, I've never actually cycled up the, yeah. um, the the slip road of the Westway for the obvious reasons that it's full of you know horrible cars yeah. and noise. And I think you're actually banned, but um, but tests have been done. It's not that it's not that bad. There are lots of hills in um, in London which are steeper than that. And uh, the so though the things there's there's been some investigations done about whether the uh, um, structure of the flyover can handle the um, the, the works that are needed, um, but a, uh, and the conclusions, I don't think the conclusion has been fully reached yet, but the provisional conclusion is that it can, um, because the, um, clearly it will result in less weight on the superhighway than there is now, because there will be, there will be, um, there, there won't be uh, heavy traffic on, on, on one outer lane of it. Um, the issue is whether the redistribution of weight causes extra strain on the structure, that kind of thing. So those kind of issues have to be Worked through, and they're being worked through at the moment. Okay. Well, just, I mean, um, just be clear about my kind of position. I think actually uh, the Westway is probably the worst legacy of the the, the, the previous GLC. I've complimented its best legacy down, down, down the uh, Thames barrier, and to think that the GLC wanted to put, you know, 
elevated, elevated highways like that further into town would have been a disaster. Absolutely. But, I mean, have you discounted the possibility of underneath the Westway? I mean, there, there was historically plenty of land. Yes. There was still routes and things like this. I suspect you know, cyclists are still... Uh, that's the route most cyclists are using underneath uh, the Westway. Well, the Harrow Road is a classic. I mean, sh surely that, that gives them the flexibility that they're using the, and, and more used to you, it. You'd I think, think so, wouldn't you? But unfortunately... Most of the space underneath has been taken up with things like, you know, sports clubs yeah, and no, football pitches and that. things like that. We'd have to clear them off, which wouldn't be no, at all popular in an inner city area. And um, and actually, it's also rather forbidding under there. I think it's it's nicer to be in the open air on the top. Um, the um, but I mean, the point you made about the about the you know the symbolic importance of this is also really important, as well as being a hugely important cycle route, easily easy to deliver mm -hmm. in practical terms. Um, it's actually very important symbolically. This is, this is the great symbol of how our cities were almost ruined um, by infrastructure for the car, and we're going to turn it into a symbol of how they're being reclaimed for the bike. And finally, I mean, actually, you, can, you don't have to go very far. You go to Marlborough and Flyover, regularly you'll see tailbacks all the way on the west way. Um, and it shouldn't be the case. Flyover is meant to mean cars just fly over. Um, uh, the, the knock-on effects on traffic. Now, what I don't want is all that traffic coming onto the Harrow Road and all the other roads underneath yeah. the Westway. That, that's what I think is the, re, the re problem residents are going to have because it's taken them several decades to get used to that uh, uh, damn mm. in, bit of infrastructure. It took them decades to get used to walking underneath it. Underneath it. And, and, and now they could be lumbered with all the traffic from up there coming down below. Um, the, the route's not going to go that far east. Um, as you know, it's going to leave the Westway at the Westbourne Terrace Junction. What, what happens to the Westway? The reason why you get those tailbacks on a Marlebone flyover, which is further east than we're proposing to take Superhighway, is because the, the, the route narrows. It narrows from three lanes to two. Um, and, uh, and the two lanes at that point aren't always sufficient for all the traffic. Now, our, um, our uh, proposal takes it down from three lanes to two in the eastbound direction in uh, but um, west of the uh, west of the Westbourne Terrace thing but at that point there is enough uh, there is enough there is enough capacity there um, because the uh, because the, quite a lot of the traffic leaves at the Westbourne Terrace exit okay. Okay. Okay, thank you for that let's move into another area we, we know TFL is doing lots on HGVs and things and we, we support that we want to pick up the issue of bus safety and cyclists yes yeah, yeah, Caroline thank you yeah, Andrew, um, we do want to talk about bus safety, and I mean, obviously, you're primarily concerned with, uh, with cyclists, but uh, also, I, I guess, the, the same sort of points, in many cases, bring in pedestrians as well. Um, do you feel that TfL has given sufficient attention to improving the, the safety of, of the London buses? Because I'm sure you receive as well as, well as we do. Um, a lot of correspondence with, with Tom Carney, who is a, a very uh, well-known and persistent campaigner about bus safety, understandably. But do you think that the right progress is being made? I do. I think um, we've improved the training for all bus drivers um, in terms of cyclist awareness and cycling safety. Um, the number of Clearly, there have been a number of casualties involving cyclists. Mm. I think Tom was a pedestrian, wasn't he, when he was hit by a bus. Um, but, uh, but it's nothing like as disproportionate a number as with HGVs, and that's why our focus has been on HGVs. Um, and as you know, we've done things like the safer lorry charge. So the, um, the bus issue is important to us, and, and clearly we are directly responsible for the... Um, the parameters under which the bus network is operated, they're operated by contracts as TFL. Yes, yes. And part of the contracts stipulate that the training shall include um, uh, uh, enhanced cycle awareness training. Yeah, I mean, you feel that the, the buses are, are equipped uh, by their operators with, with the right kit to, to protect cyclists. Because one, one I mean, things... you, you mentioned HGVs, and we know that a lot's being done there. A lot, or a, some, a lot of proposals and a lot of you new know, kit is being fitted. What about the buses? Some of the same technologies that are being trialled on lorries um, can be used on buses. Um, we've been trialling something called the 360 um, sensor on buses at mm. Bexley Heath, Bexley Heath Depot. London General, uh, London Central has been doing that. 
And, uh, and, and that's basically a device that uses cameras fitted all around the bus to give the driver a, a, a view of the bus as if it's from above, you know, from a, from a camera flying just over the yes. bus. It's really yes. good. Yes, I'm um, familiar with that, yeah. And uh, that's going to be fitted, or uh, that or similar systems are going to be fitted to more buses. Um, and the, we've also got a program of trials um, on um, of similar devices. As you know, we are flooded with people saying, here's the latest miracle technological mm. cure. Fit this, to all, fit this to all your Boris bikes, fit this to all your lorries, fit this to all your buses, and all will be well. Now, of course, there is no miracle cure, but um, we're going to announce a programme soon um, uh, to evaluate technical options for the next phase of the Safer Lorry Scheme. Um, and that, um, that, as you know, the first phase involves fitting mirrors and uh, side guards. The next phase may involve fitting some kind of technological fix um, to lorries, if we can find one that works um, and that is worth doing and that won't impose a wholly disproportionate burden on operators for a wholly, you know, for a very small um, benefit. Um, so we are, we have a programme of trials at the Transport Research Laboratory on that and some of that technology is also very much applicable to buses. And are you uh, satisfied that the, the drivers, on the one hand, I mean, you said that there's been special training for drivers to, to deal with cycling. So the drivers are cooperating, and indeed the bus operators are. I mean, what have we got? To, they are. About 12 or 15 different bus operators across London, I think. Yeah, they, they, they are cooperating, and, um, and clearly it's very much in their interest to do so, because yeah. we are their customers. Yeah. The, the other thing that uh, I think it was Darren, Darren Johnson particularly got a, 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 an undertaking from the mayor about the operation, I think it's called, is it called CIRAS uh, reporting system yes. for, 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 to be brought in to the buses. I mean, I believe it exists in, on the underground, but this is, this is for drivers to, to feed in uh, anonymously, to feed in information right. about practices. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Right, right, I'm sorry, I'd, I'm, uh, but it's probably a question for the bus people rather than me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, we want to just pick up a couple of things on cycle hire, Murad. Yes, uh, thank you, Caroline. Um, yeah, as, 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 you, as you know, Andrew uh, Santan uh, had taken over, given me an opportunity now to paint the town red whilst I'm uh, going on the bike myself. But the, uh, <laughs> apart from that benefit um, uh, for, for myself, I'm just wondering what benefits we could see in marketing the scheme and maybe in, uh, encouraging new cyclists. Local hire is one of the seven strands I mentioned and it's, it's one of the four which I think is going really well. Um, and uh, we've done, as you know, a, a vastly improved sponsorship deal. Mm. 45% more in absolute terms, 25% more in real terms, and uh, no, um, uh, you know, break clauses. It's for the full seven years. Um, the Santander is uh, extremely keen to um, use his expertise to market the scheme, um, and as you know, um, they're pretty good at it. They've got, uh, they've just nabbed a vast share of the current account market um, through their clever marketing. And, and through the benefits of the scheme um, and uh, they're going to use their branches, they're going to use innovative uh, techniques to, to get even more people using the bikes uh, and that's, that's terrific because one of the, one of the things we wanted um, as, as well as the money of course was a, um, a, a partner who was, um, was going to be heavily involved in, in helping us promote and generate the scheme. Um, and I think we've got that in Santander and I'm really delighted with the deal we've done um, and it's, uh, it includes as you know um, the base payment is, uh, is uh, 6.25 million a year and then there's a payment on top of um, a million a year for the, uh, for the activation which is the marketing yeah. we're, we're all, I think we're all signed up on, on, the, the, on the better deal and, and certainly uh, I'm sure it's going to make a difference what I was really concerned about is that actually at the moment I'm a beneficiary as a central Londoner to, um, because I can get on the bike and get to, to my mum's, my sister's, places around central London, whether it be Chelsea, Maidaville, or whatever. But actually, if I wanted to go to the out, outer London, it's, it's not impossible. I, I've got to stop at River, Fulham, for example, or, or if I wanted to go further south, 
it's not possible. Are we going to see this scheme being extended further in, into outer London, in, in the town centres there no. at least, so that, that's an option for... Not, not significantly, no. Not significantly. Um, there are going to be some incremental expansions, oozing, as we call it. Um, we're going to expand to the Olympic Park. Um, I'm talking to Southwark about expanding into Southwark, because that's one bit of the inner city mm. that's not very well covered at the moment. Um, but we're not going to see an expansion to outer London. The, the scheme already costs a reasonably sizable amount of the cycling budget, and I don't want it to consume much more, to be honest, and there will be a big capital cost of, uh, of, of, of extending it further. The, the scheme works well in central London because it's got that kind of density and mesh of journeys. Outer London would be much more difficult to get heavy usage out of the, out of the scheme there because the journeys are... Uh, firstly fewer in number and they also tend to be sort of to and from the same places whereas in London you've got a much more overlapping weave of journeys all over the place. Okay well it's not going to be extended further out. It's going to be extended incrementally but not, but, but not in any major okay. way unless, unless a new uh, major. That will be done piecemeal depending on local authorities and, and others who may want to fund it. What, I mean th th what other kind of possible operational changes uh, could we see? I mean there have been issues about how regularly or not they change yeah, bikes and docking stations. Think, are, are things like that have been brought through as well? I, I, think, you, I think you've seen a, uh, a real improvement in the operation of the scheme. Um, and all those stories we were seeing a year, a year and a half ago about people not being able to get bikes and sort of niggles in the operations. Now, clearly, those kind of problems haven't totally vanished. Um, there are always going to be such problems. It's always, going, it's always going to be impossible to meet the demand at Waterloo Station in um, you know, 8.45 in the morning. Um, but we have significantly improved performance on that, and as a result, you have seen significantly fewer complaints, significantly fewer <coughs> media stories about that kind of thing, and that's, that's a real tribute to the work done by the, by the cycle hire team at TfL. They've, they've enormously improved day-to-day -day performance and ironed out niggles. Satisfaction's at a record high, 80% satisfaction, and usage is at a record high, it's 5% up on the year before, and those things are reflections of the fact the system is performing better than it was. So as well as doing a better deal, we have um, a fantastically improved performance. Okay. And I, I did I mean, payments and what have you is another issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I did pursue, uh, you know, those of us who have got the key, why, why we can't have it on our Oyster card, and that's a more mm -hmm. long-term thing for, for TfL to do. Um, but there are people who use it on a daily basis, and, and, and there have been issues there. What kind of things can you offer a casual user, user whether it be a tourist or a, a Londoner, just realising that this, the, the journey could be done better by bike riding? One of the things that is choose. going to boost the usage of these bikes even further is the general changes we're doing to the network in London. The superhighways alone, I'm sure, will generate huge amounts of extra business um, because it will just be more uh, attractive and easier to cycle in central London and the central London grid, if we get that sorted, um, will also generate more business because there will be places for people to ride. At the moment you, you hire a bike and it's often quite hard to work out where the best route is and which way you should go and, um, and, that, uh, and that hopefully will change as a result of our, uh, of our changes to the route, to the network generally. So that will boost, it'll boost cycling generally of course but it will boost uh, use of the Santander cycles even more. Yeah. And, and the bikes themselves, as you know, they're, they're considered to be heavy. Are, are we going to get lighter versions no. in the long run? I no, think they, okay. they work, I think they work really well. I mean, they're not meant to be kind of zippy mm. racers. Yeah. They're, meant, they're meant to be heavy. They're meant to be the kind of thing that you Honky. can ride in your ordinary clothes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, but uh, so, so no. Okay. Great. And Nevin, you wanted to pick something up there. <clears throat> yes, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Andrew. Mayor in his London plan has got a uh, strategy which is sort of uh, agreed and uh, enthusiastically sort of supported by all parties. And that is uh, for economic and housing regeneration. We've got 38 opportunity areas, I think eight intensification areas. Generally, a lot of them outside uh, well, in London, in, in outer mm -hmm. London boroughs. Should we not be actually strategically there for looking at uh, taking the hard schemes to those areas where there's going to be major level of activities, infrastructure improvements, large amount of housing, new sort of multi-use uh, sort of uh, developments and so on. So isn't it something that you should be looking at it now? Well, it, 
it, it comes back to the nature of journeys in those places. Um, we are not going to see the kind of intricate, overlapping, meshed sort of network of journeys that we get in central London. There'll be typically, typical journeys in suburbs are to and from specific places like, you know, if you're in Kingston. We, I mean, the Mini Hollands, most of the Mini Hollands thought about doing cycle hire schemes as part of their bids. And they mostly decided against it on the basis that there would be an awful lot of bikes going into Kingston Town Centre in the morning and then coming out in the evening and, and doing maybe like two trips a day, if that. And um, that's the difficulty with suburban journeys. The, so I, I think the emphasis in the suburbs needs to be on, on getting people to ride their own bikes and, and on the infrastructure to do that. And there's a lot of potential there because there are lots of quiet streets in the suburbs. There are lots of places that people can ride bikes. It's usually a matter of fixing one or two key sort of nodal places that, um, that, that make it difficult. And that's, again, partly what the opportunity areas are about. You see, I mean, I, I take a view that uh, suburban landscape is going to change faster than we think. They are very urban and will yeah. become even more urban. Look at the example, of, uh, um, look at uh, northwest London for that matter, western London. You got Brent, you got Harrow, you got Old Oak Common linking, uh, you know, <coughs> Ealing and so on. Now, there's some very, very major, serious regeneration plans for those areas. And that's where we need to look at, when you talk about incremental, it's got to be more than incremental in terms of pace of implementing bike hire schemes, because surely when you look at uh, clearly in, in detail some of those areas where town centers are being connected, the level of activity and, and sort of population increase, surely there, there are major uh, benefits uh, in introducing uh, bike hire schemes sooner than uh, later. All that common to take the example is about five miles west of central London and um, you wouldn't just be able to implement a bike hire scheme in, in the redevelopment area, you'd have to implement it across the five miles between Old Oak Common and the rest of the scheme um, and that would be enormously and prohibitively expensive and, uh, and, and with other opportunity areas it would be even more expensive um, and I think I, I think we've got to start from the ground up in planning these developments for cycling, which, which we've been quite bad in the past. I think the Olympic Park, for instance, is, is particularly well planned for cycling, even though it's quite new. And we're having to retrofit it in lots of ways, which, which I talked about earlier. But, um, but we need to be better at that, and I think we are getting better at uh, ensuring that cycling is built into new developments. But I don't support extending the cycle scheme in any significant way to outer London. Okay, lovely, thank you. Just finally, um, when can we expect contactless on cycle hire? Um, I, uh, I mean, there's a whole series of options being worked through on that. Um, I haven't got anything Rough time on that. Scale. I, don't, I don't think there's a, I mean, th there's, there's a whole series of options being worked through for the future of cycle hire, which we're in discussion with a new sponsor about, and, uh, and it's all tied up with a new deal. So there's nothing to say on that at the moment. Nothing at the moment. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew, Thank for your you. time and your work in this area and for updating us. Um, date of our next meeting, we're having an extra special Transport Committee next um, Friday afternoon. Time to move to three o'clock, where we've got Network Rail and Go via Thames Link coming before us to discuss London Bridge oh. and the hell that we all suffer every day and Londoners are suffering. And I've got no other urgent business, so I close the meeting. <clears throat> and members, don't forget,